Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. I remember when it aired on Fox News at the time. It was bizarre, right after 9-11. They had like a four or five part series. It's on YouTube. Talking about Israeli intelligence, following the supposed hijackers, dancing on buildings, videotaping. I've even interviewed... One of the cops involved in the arrest years ago, the, 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 the white vans, all of it. And that's something that the film I produced, Fabled Enemies, uh, covers. For exposing that, I was then accused of working for Israel. For exposing the U.S.'s liberty, being a false flag attack on our Navy and interviewing uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, the, the captain before he died, the first mate, all of them exposing it. The, the, uh, the anti-Israel crowd then said that was a cover-up for Israel because they actually aren't the anti-Israel crowd. The main virulent anti-Israel groups are almost all FBI, like Hal Turner, as I told you he was, that came out. To not have criticism of Israel be legitimate, but to just be ultra-mindless so it doesn't ever affect anybody in Israel so they'll listen. It's actually very diverse viewpoints and ideas. There's big debates now about funding Al-Qaeda and Netanyahu endorsing it and so it's not monolithic, just like Germany's not monolithic, Mexico's not monolithic. So it gets weird whenever I talk about the Pope calling for world government, people call up and say, I work for the Catholics, church or something. Uh, you know, or, or as people always call and they go, what do you know about this? Because I've gotten the call many times and I know exactly what they're talking about. I've covered it. We, I made a best-selling film about it as part of my cover-up, of course. Uh, I'm being sarcastic. And, and, and really what it always is, is a way for also, not just the operatives, but other people to feel better than everyone else. Oh, Alex, he's an Israeli agent. Well, he lives in the same city as Stratford or whatever. And then, well, that, you know, that, that proves it all. Nothing he does is good. None of it's true. Why, let's take him down, which is what Cass Sunstein, who I do think is an Israeli operative at the White House, said will infiltrate the, the new media and cause infighting. And call, that's COINTELPRO. But I am more than happy to discuss the Israeli clear involvement with cutouts with Saudi Arabia, Pakistani intelligence, U.S., NATO. I just don't think it was only Israel. Because you say Israel, it's, it's all this global criminal cell that's in all these systems. Now, separately in those reports, Israel has one of the big contracts for a lot of the caller ID systems in the country to track calls and surveil. And there's a major intelligence problem. And I, I point out that's how this country, from every angle, has been overtaken. Now, you got two minutes to talk about. Try to plug the name of the YouTube video so people can see it and uh, give me your view on it. Yeah, thank you, Alex. And I appreciate you uh, talking about the Amdocs and Comforce uh, companies that uh, actually monitor. Yeah, we made a film companies. about it. It's all part of our cover-up. Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. Uh, basically, it's Israel Spies on U.S. Part 1. There's a four-part series. Uh, and it basically just talks about uh, how there were 60 Israeli uh, nationals that were arrested in connection with the 9-11 attack. No, no, there's no we're doubt that the Israelis were, at certain levels, groups of Israelis, were working with the Saudi Arabians, the Pentagon. It was a very sick operation. Go ahead. And you've enlightened me and opened my eyes, and I know that, you know, there's some people that are just going to say, oh, it was Jews and it was Israel. I know that's not the case. They were definitely working with other intelligence operations. Because that's what side. happened. I mean, I mean, part of it was paid for by Mossad. The FBI was involved in the other part. Criminal cells in all the agencies, so they were all could be corrupted and all then blackmailed with the info. Do you know how blackmailed our government is for taking part in that now? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's wild. I mean, they're, they're inclined to do things, especially on the House, uh, in the Senate, uh, you know, uh, basically all of Congress. Uh, you know, they have to bend their knee to certain aspects or else they're not going to get financed. Do you think, uh, think of how scared members of Congress are. They all know it was an inside job. And it's not just Israelis, you know, it's other aspects, other lobbies, other... Um, sure, sure, I mean, that's my issue. I mean, if you just say Israelis... There's a whole bunch of different power structures in Israel. People don't even know which power structure that would be or subgroup. Like if you said the Vatican's doing something bad, what, all Catholics? No, it's certain, you have to identify the bad that's going on. I mean, they got 
Baptist churches, you know, calling for nuking the Middle East. I mean, you know, does it mean all Baptists or, or Christians are bad? No. It, it's just that there's this bad vein of stage terror out there. You'd like to talk to him, Steve Lane. We're going to go to Steve here in just a moment. But it, it just hit me during the break. The plan of San Diego during World War I was a German government plan because Germany, when it was part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, that it was during World War I, had actually run Mexico off and on uh, for about 40, 50 years. And uh, the, the, the Germans would send their royalty uh, basically over there to control the country. That's why you get German brewed Mexican beer like Dos Equis. It's why the railways down there are German style. And even their signals and commands are German. Uh, commands translated into Spanish. And the plan was by the Germans was to get the Mexicans to kill all white people, all white males 16 and older, and they launched the attack down in the Big Bend area and other areas. And it was 30 raids by Mexico into the United States trying to draw the United States out of World War I. It failed miserably, and then there were reprisals that were uh, heavy-handed uh, and vicious by the U.S. Army to the Mexicans in the area. But this has been going on for a long time. When the Marines went down to Mexico City, you know, the halls of Montezuma, and took over, going back uh, you know, in the middle of the century before last, that was because Mexico was all the way up in Colorado and areas of Oklahoma claiming they controlled it, which they never even had claims to before that with Spain. And we're killing uh, U.S. Army uh, teams. So that's where all this comes from. And now the globalists, the big mega banks that run Mexico, run the narcotics trafficking on record, launder the money, they are using the failure of Mexico, the 130,000 dead in the last eight years, and Latin America below Mexico, below Southern North America, Central and South America imploding into depression. The Caribbean crime levels are four, five, ten times higher. The Bahamas are a war zone now of just criminal activity. It used to be safe. Uh, other islands that were totally safe are becoming dangerous. The whole world's sinking into crisis. And I'm going to shoot a special report today that will air later in the week, maybe even next week, dealing with the accelerated global collapse. But I wanted to talk to Steve Lane first about that subject, what he would do on that front, and what he would do if he gets into Congress. But it's great to get him on because... I know him well. I know he's a great guy, family man, uh, you know, engineer, uh, uh, you know, teaches construction at the university, uh, Air Force veteran. And I know in the demographics, he has a good chance of winning and getting into Congress there from the great state of Tennessee. So we're going to be talking to him in a moment. But think about this. We have our government being collapsed right now. And it's into the North American Union. It's not even Mexico. And it's total treason, and it's being done. And if this next wave gets in, all the others are going to come. It's not going to be hundreds of thousands. It's going to be millions. And Mexico is involved in a very aggressive action, not sealing their Guatemala border, working with Obama, this is on record, to bring the immigrants in on the, quote, train of death. These big trains every day, all the way up from Central and South America. As long as they don't get off, the illegals are not put in forced labor camps, as Mexico does, the New York Times reported. Mexico is conduiting this up, and the Border Patrol then gives them vouchers to go anywhere they want in the country. They're released. AP was forced to admit that today, and we'll go over that article. We'll get into the NSA. We'll get into the wars. We'll get into all of it with Steve Lane. Steve Lane off and on co-hosted a couple different shows, some of the shows that I hosted, like Freedom Report and others, was a frequent guest on my daily uh, weekday radio show. And he's a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, served in support of Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm. He teaches building construction at the Tennessee College of Applied Technology in Nashville. And two years ago, he was awarded Instructor of the Year. Steve is a, currently a Republican primary. His district is overwhelmingly Republican, as in the state. They have uh, super majorities in both houses and have a Republican governor. He's running against Republican incumbent. I won't even say their name. Recently called one of the top ten most valuable congressmen. He has recently endorsed by the Republican Liberty Caucus. Uh, and, and, of course, that's uh, who Steve's been endorsed by. Steve Lane for Congress dot com uh, joins us. And we've got to we've got to get him elected to Congress. And but I want to get him on. And again, we'll take your calls at the bottom of the hour in a, in a wider area. To discuss 
The Tea Party in Texas and Virginia uh, with Bratt and so many others winning, the, you know, the next Ted Cruz, the next Rand Paul, uh, the next uh, Congressman Jones, uh, the next uh, Justin Amash. There are so many of these great people getting elected, and, and it's one of our only hopes. That's why the globalists are trying to accelerate the collapse of the country with Cloward and Piven, Obamacare, shutting down the coal power plants. What is Steve Lane going to do in Congress as a bully pulpit, I mean, I can't imagine what he would do in Congress. He would be basically a well-spoken, calm Alex Jones in Congress. He knows as much as I do or more. And he joins us, Steve Lane for Congress.com. And uh, again, um, he is just a great patriot. I want everybody to get behind him. Steve, I hadn't seen you in years in person. We've talked over the phone many times. You've been busy up there with family like I've been busy down here. So much has happened. You heard me do that long intro. What do you have to say? Do you realize it has been 15 years since we've been on the air together? I was thinking about it just before we went on. Somebody asked me uh, that same question. Amazing, buddy. Well, listen, let's talk about all the stuff we've been through. You're not just some new libertarian, Republican, conservative Tea Party guy coming along. You've been involved for about 16, 17, 18 years in the liberty movement, the proto-liberty movement. And, and, and let's get into what you would do as a congressman.